Hey, Steve Zook here. Welcome back to Poke Suit Channel and the Guitar Ladder System. You know, I'm always trying to think of ideas for videos, and, and it gets it gets hard to keep thinking of stuff. I, I'm putting in some metaphysics in here too, because I'm really I'm really into consciousness development, and it does correlate directly to music, because music is about learning to listen. Music is about learning to listen and let your intuition help guide you in getting ideas from the one mind and you know, tuning into ideas and de developing them. Hey, this is a Yamaha FG340. I think it has a Roman numeral two after it. But uh, today's subject is understanding, you know, older vintage acoustic guitars because it's uh, it's a really interesting thing. <laughs> I want to make a few points today because a, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. <laughs> you, uh, the, you players out there who've been playing a long time and have some experience with guitars, you're going to get this more than other people that, that have not had much experience. But uh, a few points I want to talk about. First of all, this guitar is a laminate top. Sounds freaking amazing. <laughs> Guitar does not have to be, uh, I'm going to try to keep this conversation relatively easy for everybody to understand. Some of it, like I said, people will get more than others. Some of my best sounding guitars are a lamb in the top. I'll tell you, most of the ones that sound unbelievable are made by Yamaha in the 70s or 80s. A guitar does not have to have a solid top to sound amazing. In fact, I, I think that many guitars, the best example is if you ever have had a old Yamaha FG-180, Elliott Smith played it, Jeff Buckley. The FG-180 sound amazing. Some of the best sounding ones are laminate tops. I think every once in a while some of them are solid, but Yamaha knows some secrets to making guitars. I've even heard theories that they've stored wood miles under the ocean, but in terms of the construction and the components and the physics of making an acoustic instrument, there's no doubt about it, Yamaha knows some secrets to making acoustic guitars. That's just amazing. And uh, in fact, I just changed strings on this guitar. See, this guitar sounds like a freaking orchestra. I'm just using a hundred dollar Zoom Q3 here with really cheap mics, but a lot you can have a laminate top guitar and it can sound amazing. Now here, here's why I say this because sometimes and, and it's not just about trying to sell a guitar. I don't really need to sell anything right now, but I, I like getting great guitars in the hands of cool people. I really do. I, I like to give my stuff a good home. But sometimes people will email me and they go, "Oh, is it a laminate or a solid top?" And I have no trouble, you know, obviously being honest and saying, "Well, it's a solid top or a laminate top." But I think sometimes when people learn a little bit about guitars, they then come to conclusions like, "Well, if it's not a solid top, it must not be a great guitar," and that's just bullshit. A, a, a guitar can be a laminate top like this one and sound fucking unreal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, 
Yamaha knows Yamaha knows some secrets to making guitars, and uh, I can't tell you what those secrets are because they've guarded them. But some of the best sounding guitars I've ever owned, including guitars worth you know four grand or more, um, are some of the. And I've had I've had thirties Martins, and I've had fifties Martins. I've had, I've had a lot of guitars. Come, I'm sixty nine years old. I've had a lot of guitars go through my uh, ears and, and hands. But some of my best sounding guitars like this one, which I really am not nuts about selling, I don't, I don't even know if I can. If I did sell it, I'd probably want at least, you know, like, you know, like 450 for it, but I'm really not nuts about selling it. But some of the best sounding guitars I've had have been laminate tops. Now I'm not saying that a solid top isn't a great sounding guitar. Of course it is, if you find a good one. I've made the point before, every guitar you have to take on a guitar by guitar basis. I've got a, I've got a 96 Martin D35 in the corner that sounds un unbelievable. And of course, it's all solid wood guitar. The reason I bring this up is, 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 you know, I'm trying to help educate people, not just for buying from me, but for buying in general, that, you know, you don't want to shut your mind to a guitar just because it's, it's made out of laminate wood, some laminate guitars. And most of the ones that I've owned that sound amazing and very orchestral with, a, with unbelievable overtones like this one, are laminate and tops, but again, Yamaha knows some secrets to making guitars that I don't know what they are, but it's not bullshit. They, they really know what they're doing. Anyway, another thing I want to talk about is the saddle. Sometimes people get a little bit of knowledge and, and then they just they still don't make the best decisions because they don't have the full information. So that's what I'm trying to do in this video. A guitar can be a great guitar and a great value, even though the saddle has been sanded down. Now, the saddle sands usually it gets sanded down really low because the neck starts to shift a little bit. Now, some luthiers that really aren't doing too well need to sell you on a neck reset because they're gonna make a lot of money. Neck resets can be four or five, six hundred dollars you know? But you don't need to do a neck reset. I, I, I sold a 30s Martin 0017, and uh, I've sold a lot of guitars. Like I had a guy that used to help me named Sean, and he used to actually help me lower it. Uh, what, what he would do is very, very lightly sand the bridge down a little bit and then you can take the saddle down a little bit more. Um, and this has even been done on some Alvarez's that have the metal in there. But, uh, you know, if a guitar sounds great, you don't need to spend five, six hundred bucks on a neck reset. Uh, but a lot of luthiers are more specialized in electric guitars and they don't know enough, about, they don't know as much about acoustics. You kind of have to direct them on what to do. I've taken this guitar to some places. I've said, look, just, you know, really lightly, lightly sand the bridge down, you know, very lightly, or you're, you're going to rattle a, a, a brace loose, very lightly sand the bridge down, and then you can bring the saddle down a little bit more. So the reason I bring that up is you don't want to, you know, if you if somebody asks a question, well, you know, is the saddle really low? And if I answer, well, yes, it is, then they're, then they're just like, since they've learned a little bit, they think, oh, well, then there's no way I want to buy it because it might need a neck reset. Not true. I think I've done one neck reset in, in the 35 years I've been you know, buying and selling and collecting and playing, well, I've been playing guitars since I was eight and I'm 69. I think I've done one freaking neck reset and that's it. Um, so the, the, the thing is, you know, you don't need to, you know, because most older guitars do have the saddle down low, so you, so you get a more playable action and, you know, different sellers are, or you know, we'll, we'll volunteer that information more. But my point again, just being, just because the saddle is sanded down, doesn't mean it's not a good value or an unbelievable guitar. I bought this guitar. Sometimes you can fix that situation by just putting on a little bit lighter strings. On this guitar, I think when I bought it, I think it had 12. <laughs> I just put some lovins on and it's fine. And I play this in dad gap a lot too. But you hear that, that those overtones? It's 
got just unbelievable overtones. Now my Martin D35 sounds unbelievable and it's got a really rare bear claw top which makes it more valuable and 96 you got some age there you got what 26 years or whatever the, the Martin sounds unbelievable but this guitar does things that the Martin won't do the Martin I think I'm asking 42 I'll take like you know 34 or 35 it's an I really don't care if I sell it because it's a really really rare one it's, it's very difficult to find a great Martin that has a bear claw top with it, that kind of figure all not just the small little soaking patterns but bear claw kind of has big clumps of of almost like thick really thick looking flame and and it's a very mature wood it sounds just gorgeous it ages really nice and then that my my 96 martin d35 is an incredible guitar but it doesn't do what this does it this this has got a little more lively overtone series every guitar is different So just because the saddle is sounded down low does not mean you should be like, oh, I read on the internet that if the saddle's low, it needs a neck reset, so I better not buy it because I'll have to spend 500 bucks. Bullshit, you don't have to. You just got to find a luthier that's not hurting to make rent. You got to find a luthier that's not, a lot of luthiers work on acoustic guitars, but they're really better on electrics and they, they, they still have a lot to learn. So you just got to find a luthier and you just got to tell them, look, I, I don't want a neck reset. I don't want to, I don't want to pay something expensive. I just want to get you know, just lightly sand down the bridge so we can take the saddle down a little bit and make it playable, you know? And you don't want to get the action too low because then you actually lose a lot of tone, you know? But anyway, um, yeah, so. So that's the skinny on that. So um, let me see, what else was I going to talk about? Okay, so yeah, it doesn't have to be a solid top to be an unbelievable guitar because Yamaha knows secrets to making guitars. It's true. Uh, like I said, I even heard a thing that they stored wood way under the ocean. But they know some things about, about you know, the construction of an acoustic to just to make it sing. Like, like if you've ever had an FG-180. I've got an FG-150, which is kind of a triple O size. And it's the orange label, Nippon Gakka, made in Japan. Just sounds amazing. I'll, you know, I'm willing to sell that one. Um, but so my point just being, you don't need to be afraid to buy a guitar because the saddle's low. If it's playable, it sounds good. You can always have somebody just sand the bridge down, you know, to bring the saddle down a little bit lower. It shouldn't be too much, you know, 75 bucks, maybe a hundred, you know. Uh, sometimes you have to find a luthier that doesn't have a big shop with a big overhead and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, like I said, a little knowledge is dangerous. So, and you don't need to, like I said, if you're looking into a guitar, it could be a, a lamb at the top and still just sound amazing like this one. I think the three piece back also adds overtone series and overtones and brings out the mids and the mid bass. But yeah, this guitar just has an orchestral bloom that's just unbelievable. I just put new strings on, so they're probably stretching, but. Those are some of the points when you're when you're looking at a used guitar, like I said, and, and it doesn't have to be an orange label, Nippon Gaka to be killer. This this has a white label. This this guitar has the Nippon Gaka 
orange label made in Japan uh, sound. Well, it's, it's you know it's got a unique sound, but it's got that same great great overtone series and, and really great tone. And this one is not the orange label Nippon Gaka. This one's a white label. I can't see where it's made. It's, it might be made in Taiwan or China. It doesn't really freaking matter. Oh, also I wanted to mention about a little bit of bellying. It's really common for acoustic guitars to have a little bellying, you know, that comes up a little bit up behind the bridge because the bracing they use is sometimes a different wood than the other wood on the top and the back. So it ages differently and it, it, it changes differently than they, they, they would have been better off to use the same kind of wood or the same year of wood or whatever. But it, and so I like I've got one guitar which is an Aria made in Japan. It sounds amazing. It sounds like an old Martin D28. And uh, it's got, you know, the wood comes up a little bit behind the bridge. That's not a big deal. Uh, it just means that the, that the, that the bracing is, is aging a little bit different from the rest of, of the guitar because they, it's a different kind of a wood and probably a different year of wood, you know. So that's not a reason to also be worried about buying a guitar. You know, well, the thing is, a lot of sellers just don't volunteer the information as much as I do. Some of them do, to be fair, and some don't. But just because the, 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 the guitar body is, and you see this a lot on older classicals. I've had classicals I've sold for thousands, as well as Martins I've sold for thousands that have, that have a little, you know, the wood comes up, a little bellying, they call it sometimes. Uh, might be a different term for behind the bridge, but you know, uh, I've sold guitars for thousands where the wood comes up a little bit. Not a big deal. Like I said, you see it, I, I've got a lot of classicals. You see it a lot on classical guitars as well. Not a big deal. Um, so, you know, my, my main point is just that, you know, you learn a little bit about a guitar, but don't let that completely close your mind to being open about buying a guitar because most old vintage guitars, you know, from the 60s or 70s or early 80s are going to have some of these issues, whether it's the, the saddle sanded down or maybe a little, you know, coming up a little bit, the wood on the body behind it. Don't let that turn you, as well as, you know, a top that might not be solid, that might not be laminate. It could still mean that the guitar you're looking at could be an unbelievably great instrument and give you a lot of joy and really make you happy. So, you know, don't don't turn off your mind to that. Um, like this guitar here, it's funny, when I bought this guitar, I met with a guy. <laughs> at a Starbucks I met him at a Starbucks and I made him an offer and he wasn't too nuts about the offer but I went a little low on my offer not just because I want to make a little profit but also because I wasn't quite sure about the setup on it because it had such thick strings and I think it was tuned a little high so and then he drove away and then I texted him back and up my offer, I think another 50, 60 bucks, I forget what it was. And uh, he had already, he, he didn't see the text a little later. So I ended up having to chase him. I had, had to drive another half an hour to meet him at a gas station or something. And he's like, oh, he was cool. He was like, well, I'm sorry, I didn't see your text. So I bought it and then I, I, it, was, it was great. I got lucky just, just putting on a set of 11s. Uh, this thing plays fine and I mostly use it for dad gad. Sometimes using a set of tens can make a guitar more playable, and if it's a great guitar, it will still sound really good. Because great tone is not just about volume. Great tone is about the overtone series, an orchestral bloom, you know, that kind of just woody, natural, crystalline quality, you know. So those are the, the areas I want to talk on today. So my point just being, you, know, you learn a little bit about guitars, because sometimes people have asked me, oh, is the saddle sanded down low? And I'm like, yeah. And then I never hear from her again, and that's fine. I'm, I don't pressure people to buy, but I just want people to understand that don't say no to a guitar just because it might have this, the saddle sanded down low. You can always, like I said, you can have a luthier. You have to just kind of direct them sometimes, and if they don't have a lot of experience with acoustics, maybe find somebody that does. Just ask them to very lightly sand down the wooden bridge so you can get the saddle a little bit lower. Again, if it has a little bellying on the top, uh, where it's kind of coming up behind the bridge, that's not an, a big deal unless you're hearing a, a rattle of a brace or something like that. But usually it's already shifted and everything. That's not a big deal. Um, again, uh, having a solid top is not the end all of great guitar design. This guitar is one of the best guitars I've ever heard. And it's, it's, a, it's a lamb in the top. It just sounds...
sound. So those are the points. It doesn't have to be a solid top. It can be a laminate and still be an incredibly high quality, unmagical sounding, magic mojo sounding guitar. It can come up a little bit behind the bridge. That's not a big deal. It can even have some kind of warping or bellying, you know, in, by, the, by the sound hole, a little shifting. That's, that's, you know, that's not a reason to say no to a guitar. It could be a lifelong, li lifelong friend, easy for me to say. Um, so those are the points I wanted to make today. But most, most of the older guitars that I find that sound unbelievable are often Yamahas. And like I said, I've got an FG150 right now, which is kind of a triple note. That, that one is an orange label made in Japan, Nippon Gaka, which if you can find a good one are great guitars. Again, you need to take it on a guitar by guitar basis. Some of the Nippon Gaka made in Japan orange label guitars aren't that great. Again, I've made this point a million times. Every guitar is different. You can't just say, well, it's, you know, if I find this exact one. So a lot of the Yamahas that aren't orange label Nippon Gaka can be great guitars, even if they're made in Taiwan or China. So this, this thing sounds amazing. Like I just put strings on it because I was playing it the other night. And it just sounds un un unbelievable. Those are the points. Let's see if I, you know, I missed anything. So yeah, solid top doesn't have to be. It can be laminate top and sound sound amazing because Yamaha knows some secrets to making guitars, and this is not bullshit. Uh, again, if, if the saddle's real low, it's not a reason just to just to turn your mind off to the guitar. It, it, you just need to find a luthier. It's not hurting to make rent. It's not going to try to sell you a five six hundred dollar neck reset. You just say please lightly sand the bridge down. A little bit very lightly so you don't you know loosen the bra uh, a brace and then uh, you can bring the saddle down a little bit and then uh, like I said if it comes if the wood of the body's coming up a little bit behind the bridge not a reason to freak out they just they just use wood they, they should have made a little bit better choice and used bracing same you know kind of wood same year but it when they use bracing sometimes they use wood that's a different you know, it's a different kind of wood or, or a different age of wood, so it ages differently. So that's why that happens often. Um, and that's about it. So, uh, you know, you just need to keep an open mind and keep learning. Of course, there's no substitute for playing different guitars. But I just wanted to make the point, you know, you don't, there's a lot of great guitars out there. And a lot of the great Yamahas are not just the 180. Like I said, I got an FG150. That one happens to be the orange label Nippon Gaka sounds unreal and what's really interesting too is that sometimes you can play a guitar and it sounds like not very good like it sounds kind of dull and it, it, guitars fall asleep so you got to wake them up my fg 180 i bought it and it sounded okay for a while and then i decided to take it out of the case and let it just sit on my wall for a while and i live about a mile from the beach and i really do believe that guitars like where i live because they absorb just a little bit of ocean just a small amount of ocean moisture moisture man and uh, they absorb a little bit of moisture and it kind of brings out the tone and then just playing a guitar will wake it up and I love waking up a guitar so anyway those are a little bit of tips on understanding older acoustic guitars or some of the best values around my I don't really like to spend a lot of money for guitars sometimes I'll spend a couple grand I try not to but there's a lot of great values out there and uh, so these are just points I wanted to make I hope you enjoyed the information. Please subscribe to the channel. If you want to donate to my channel, that'd be awesome. I put a lot of hard work into it. PayPal me at stevezook7 at yahoo.com. Even just five, ten bucks would be appreciated because this is a lot of work. Um, you can uh, PayPal to stevezook and then the number seven, not spelled out, just the number stevezook7 at yahoo.com. But I hope you appreciate the information. Uh, I have a lot of, I've been buying and selling guitars since I was about 20. I'm 69, so I've got a good, you know, 
it's a lot of math, uh, you know, with, you know, 40 years, 35, 40 years doing this. But yeah, man, Yamaha, Yamaha knows what they're doing and, and they know some secrets to making great guitars. And so don't let, you know, don't let, you know, some, some things that aren't major become major in your mind just because you read somewhere in the net. Whoa, oh, no, if, it, if the saddle sounded down really low, I need a neck reset. You know, it's not always true. Most of the time it's not true. You just need to find a luthier that, that understands that and it's not hurting to make a buck, you know. All right, folks, take care. Let's all keep the positive faith. I want to share an affirmation that I'm, I'm doing. I'm, I do life coaching too. And I've been into med, you know, consciousness development and transcendental meditation. I teach my own form of meditation I call transformational meditation, which involves a system that I've come up with called Time Aligned Transformation Lock, which is learning how to expand your consciousness, learning how to create from the quantum field, and learning how to synchronize your left and right brain, your conscious and subconscious, so you're, you can be more creative and create not just matter to matter, but create energy to matter, uh, create from the quantum field, the quantum hologram. And But anyway, here, here's an affirmation I've been doing lately for, because uh, I'll tell you, prosperity is a really interesting thing. Money is just an energy, and you can attract more of it if you get your vibe and your head together. But we, we need to kind of get rid of a lot of the software programs that we've downloaded, because most of us are walking around living in the past. Our body it becomes a subconscious we're carrying around a lot of programs and you need to substitute. So that's where affirmations and the repetition of affirmations is really important. But one, I've, I've been do doing a lot of work in my prosperity consciousness the last year or so. It's, it's been amazing results. But I've been using this affirmation. I just thought I'd share it. Um, financial miracles of all kinds are now showing up naturally and easily in my daily life with no limitations and it feels good it feels great so financial miracles of all kinds are now showing up in my daily life easily and naturally with no limitations and it feels great okay guys let's let's choose positive faith faith let's go belief clings you need to, the more you can create a little empty space in your consciousness the more, you'll, the more you will tap into the magic of who you are. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.